Welcome to the IT and digital resources in teaching foreign languages. Lecture number 15, social networks and computer games used in teaching foreign languages, MindMeister, vocabulary game played, hot potatoes, queer. Outline for today's lecture. Importance of development and use of computer games. Advantages of using computer technology in teaching a foreign language. Use of MindMeister vocabulary gameplay it's hot potatoes queer in making computer games. Game can be defined as a basic human activity which brings fun, joy, satisfaction and relaxation. The game accompanies us throughout our whole life. We can observe it among children and young animals but also among adults. The game is an un inborn activity based on instincts, therefore it is biologically purposeful. The game is important not only in childhood but also in the process of education of all the children and adolescents as well as adults. This activity develops physical functions, abilities and skills. Among children and adults, it is also an important means to relax since it is linked to the feelings of joy and excitement. Therefore, the game is important also for physical health. Computer games are very popular among the youth. Personal computer games are video games played on a personal computer rather than on a dedicated video game console or arcade machine. Their defining characteristics include a lack of any centralized control and authority, a greater degree of user control over the video gaming hardware and software used, and a general greater capacity in input processing and output. At Wikipedia webpage devoted to computer games, they are classified into a few genres action, action adventure, adventure, MMO, massively multiplayer online role-playing game, role-playing game, simulation, strategy, and other genres. Create your first mind map. Log in to MindMeister's web at www.mindmeister.com. This will redirect you to your dashboard. In the top left corner of your dashboard, click on plus new mind map and select the template from the list of, to get started. So basics. First of all, click on the plus button or press int or tab to add an idea. Click on the delete icon or press del to delete an idea. Double click anywhere on the map to add a new first level idea. Drag and drop ideas to rearrange them on your map. Use cursor keys to navigate through your map. Be more productive with keyboard shortcuts. All of your changes are saved automatically, so there is no need to save them manually. You can undo changes and easily revert to previous versions. Map layouts. There are several layout templates for you to choose from when starting on your first new map. To switch between or choose another layout, first click on I button and then change the alignment as indicated in the screenshot below. Format your ideas. Using this sidebar on the right side of the map editor, you can format individual topics on the fly. For instance, by changing their font size, font color or background color. To do this, simply select the topic you want to format and then click on the colors or font size buttons on the sideboard. For more information regarding the map editor, check the map editor. Floating topics. Float topics without any connection to the root topic to create keys, indexes or maps, including several main topics. To create floating topics, you just have to right-click any topic on your map and select Disconnect or right-click on the map and select Add Floating Topic. Multi-select. You can select multiple topics and apply the same styles, icons and even nodes by using your operating system's key shortcuts. Press Shift to select a range of topics with the same parent. 
Press Ctrl to select multiple single topics. Press Ctrl plus A to select all topics. Press Ctrl plus Ctrl plus to select the next level left or right. You can then apply the same format, icon, node, link and task to your topics with just one click. Similar to your native desktop application, you can drag and drop multiple topics and also make use of cut, copy and paste to move your topics to another parent or map. Please note, cut does not work between maps. Renaming your mind map. The name of your mind map is always the same as the same of the main topic. Changing the name of the main topic will automatically rename your mind map. How to rename your mind map? First of all, open your mind map and select the main topic. Then enter the new name of your mind map into the main topic. After all, the name of your mind map will change automatically. Copy and paste. You can easily copy entire branches of, of ideas by using the cut, copy and paste buttons in the toolbar. The same may be accomplished by using their respective keyboard shortcuts. You can also copy an entire branch to another map by clicking copy on the desired branch in the source map and switching to another map via the map switch feature in the toolbar. Once in your desired map, clicking paste will insert the copied material. Please note, cut doesn't work between maps. Share your mind map. You can share your map with unlimited number of friends or colleagues. You can decide on individual basics whether to give a person editing or only viewing rights. As the map owner, you can also unshare your map again at any time. There are two ways to share a mind map. You can invite people via email or create a secure share link, which you can then send out manually. For either of these options, click the share button in the bottom bar. This will open the quick share. You can then either type in the email addresses of the persons you want to invite or check the box next to link to share in order to create the share link. Thanks for choosing MindMeister. In this video tutorial, we are going to show you how easy it is to create your first mind map. We'll start in MindMeister's dashboard, which is the first thing you see after signing on. This is where you can create and store your mind maps and organize them into folders. To create a new map, you click here. This is the mind map editor. In its center, you'll find the root topic of your new mind map. This is where you write the title or the central idea that you're going to be focusing on. Let's say we want to plan a project, so we'll call this map Project Plan. From the root topic, we can now create child topics that will branch off in all directions. To create a child topic, we press the Tab key and write a keyword in the new bubble that appears. To finish, we press Enter. If we press Enter more than once, we'll have created another topic. Together, these two topics are what we call sibling topics because they're on the same hierarchical level. We'll call this one Project Team and then add a few sibling topics on the same level. Now we can get into more detail by adding child topics to each of the main branches we've created. To do this, we'll just click on a topic and then hit the Tab key again. Tab and Enter are really the only two shortcuts you need to quickly create a mind map. If you make a mistake, you can always go back and rewrite the text in a topic. You can also move a topic into another position. Just drag it close to another topic until it docks there. With Backspace, you can delete the topic completely. If you want one of the branches to stand on its own, you can simply disconnect it from the root topic via the context menu. On the other hand, you can also add connections between topics using arrows. To do this, click on a topic, then select the connection button in the top bar. Now click on the topic you'd like to connect to the first one. You can then add a label to the connection, change its color,
or modify its shape. So that's how you create a mind map in MindMeister. We hope you'll find the map editor intuitive and easy to use. Thanks for watching, and look out for our other video tutorials where we show you how to enhance your maps with colors and images, upload attachments, create mind map presentations, and lots more. Word Scramble Game in English. The game below is a helpful vocabulary game called Word Scramble Game for Computer Parts Vocabulary Online. The letters need to be sorted in this Word Scramble Game. Firstly, hold and drag them to make up the word. Clicking on the Answer button will display the correct order of the words. When you reload this web page, the Word Scramble Game will restart with a new set of letters. Vocabulary quiz game. Vocabulary is fun. Learn English with vocabulary word games. Vocabulary quiz game helps you learn new English words and play games that improve your vocabulary. You will be given the meaning of the word and your job is to spell the word correctly. Suitable for kids, high school students, learners of the English language or anyone who wants to test their vocabulary. Using hot potatoes to create interactive exercises. What is hot potatoes? The hot potatoes is a suite of quiz drill offering software created at the University of Victoria, Canada. It includes six applications enabling you to create interactive exercises. Multiple choice quizzes, gap fill exercises, text entry, short answer exercises, crosswords, jumbled sentence, jumbled word, drag and drop exercises, ordering matching drag and drop exercises. How can you download and register in Hot Potatoes? This software is free of charge for non-profit educational users who make their exercises available on the web. However, if you are working in a commercial context, you need to pay for a license. You can download Hot Potatoes version 5.50 self-extracting over installing zip file. Whether you are commercial or otherwise, you need to register the programs. You have to fill in a form of the website and get a registration key from them. You will use your personal key to unlock all the features of the programs. When you receive the key, simply start one of the potatoes. Anyone will do. Then click on the help menu and choose register. Then you can enter your username and key. Do you need to know HTML or JavaScript to use hot potatoes? No, all you need to do is to enter your data via text questions, answers and etc. The program will create the web pages for you. However, the programs are designed so that almost every aspect of the pages can be customized. So if you do know HTML or JavaScript, you can make almost any change you want to the way the exercises work. Three steps in making an exercise. Entering data, questions, answers and so on and save it as a data file. Configuring the output, preparing the button captions, instructions and other features of your web pages. Creating web pages, compiling your exercise into HTML or DHTML pages and view your work. Step 1. Entering data. For example, we are going to make a text entry exercise using GQuiz. The first stage is to enter the questions and answers for your exercise. Start the G-Quiz program, then enter the title, question and two answers that you see in the picture below. Note that we have entered two possible variations of the answer. The word 6 and the digit 6. This means that the program will accept either of these answers as correct. Once you have entered your data, you need to save it in case you want to change it later. Each of the Hot Potatoes programs save data in its own special file type. In GQuiz, the files end with the GQuiz extension. It is important to save your data since the programs cannot reload web pages to make changes.
The only way to change your web pages is to reload the data file, make your changes and then regenerate the web pages. Call your file test or something similar. Then the file name test z should appear in the caption of a GQuiz program. Step 2. Configurating the output. When a Hot Potatoes program creates web pages, it does so by combining three resources. The data you entered, the configuration information, a set of source files or templates containing the page structure. We have already looked at, at data. The next step is configuration. The configuration information is a collection of pieces of text including instructions for doing the exercise button captions and link URLs which are unlikely to change much more from one exercise to another. For example, all the sample exercises you looked at early in this presentation included a button label check so that the student could check his or her answer. The caption check is not likely to change from exercise to exercise, so it does not need to be stored with the data. However, you may need to change it. If you are creating quizzes in another language, for example, you can get access to all of the configuration information by choosing Configure Output from the Options menu. We are going to make two changes to configuration. First of all, we are going to change the caption of one of the buttons from hint to give me a hint. When you see the configuration screen, click on the buttons tab and change the entry for the hint button as you see below. Hello, we're going to use hot potatoes today to make a matching exercise. To do that, uh, you have to select J match, and you will be given a, a table that you can fill in with the items that you're going to match. The first thing we really need to do this time is save the file because we're going to use some images. And if you're using images in Hot Potatoes, we'll just show you. Um, what you need to do is create a folder and have those images saved ahead of time. Hot Potatoes doesn't embed the picture into the quiz file it actually just links to the image. So you have to keep the quiz file and the images all together in the one folder. So we're already prepared with our images. What we need to do is save the file. So let's just click the disk and give this file a name. We'll call it um, Matching Master. And then we're ready to actually enter our information. So let's uh, match the cities and countries to their pictures title of our quiz and then what we'll do is we'll put in some country and city names that we can then match with some images that we've already got saved. Okay what we're going to do is put the image in the right hand side. Whichever image we put in is the, the correct matching answer so we put them in in the correct order to begin with. Insert picture from file is where we're going to find our pictures and looking in that folder with our images already saved we can pick the relevant image and pop it in. It will first of all ask you what size you want the image to be. I'm going to just make them quite a bit smaller and it shows you what you'll end up with so you can judge what is roughly the right size for your quiz and click OK. And now what you notice, this is quite important, it hasn't actually popped the image into the quiz file. It simply put a link to the file and the other information relating to the size of that image. When we actually have the finished file for the student to see, they will obviously see a picture and not this code. Let's just carry on and pop the rest of the images in there. Do Paris, and again we'll just make that a little bit smaller. And then we'll do Rome. Put the insert picture in the file. And we've got a picture there again. Just make that smaller. And then the last one, insert picture from file is a picture of a castle in Scotland and again we'll just make that smaller so it fits a bit better. There we are. So we can now see that each country or city has a corresponding answer. I'm just going to save the file again to make sure that we have that saved and then what I'm going to do is select the web option. There are two here. I'm going to select the one that creates a drag and drop exercise. You can't do the first option here which creates a drop down menu because I've used images this time. If we'd had text on both sides, we could have had a drop-down menu 
version for the students or we could have had drag and drop but if you're using images like I have we have to do a drag and drop exercise so this one isn't called matching master we're going to call this one matching um, drag drop okay so we know what kind of quiz it is it's saving in the same folder so all our files are together and we're then being asked if we'd like to view the finished exercise in our browser so I'm going to give that a click and at the bottom you'll notice we've got a, a blocking message this quite often happens with your internet browser you must tell it to allow the blocked content very often happens with hot potatoes and when you've done that you then see the finished quiz and if, if we had full screen you would see that you could see all of those words the shuffled uh, hot potatoes has automatically changed the order and shuffled everything and what the learner has to do is then grab the image um, and drag it into position so um, we want to put the Apple Tower for Paris Colosseum and then we've got the Houses of Parliament once you're finished at the top there you've got check your answers and it will give you the feedback correct well done you've got 100% ok and that is how you create a drag and drop exercise in hot potatoes Good evening, my name is Krista Lawler and I am the media specialist at Carrollton High School where we have 9th through 12th grade students and today I'm going to be doing a little tutorial for you on a website called Kia, pronounced like Maria. And you can see on this page right here I have the web page address so you will know how to access this site and I'm going to be using Screencast-O-Matic to do my presentation on. The first thing I want to do is show you a few things um, about the home screen when you first log in and get on this website. I went ahead and created my very own account and it is so easy and simple. Um, but before we do that, I kind of want to go ahead and tell you a few things that this website has to offer you as a classroom teacher. Kia is a site where, as a classroom teacher, you can infuse so much technology into your classroom as well as create engaging activities for your students in a really fast, easy way. Um, it also gives you tons of teacher-created games and quizzes, or you can also create your own games and quizzes as well as access millions of other teacher created um, activities which will save you tons of time. Um, you can pretty much use Kia with any content subject. Um, you can assign homework through um, Kia. It gives quizzes and tests. It also gives you automatic feed feedback when you're doing tests and so much more um, that this is just really a, a cool tool that any classroom teacher could use. Now what you are going to want to do in order to create your own trial period um, because you can only have Kia for so long before you have to create um, an account and then you have to pay for the subscription. So you are going to first want to go to where it says about Kia and once you go there if you click on where it says start trial that is where you can see where you can create your account and you can begin to um, put exactly what you want for your account to say. Once you have created your own account, then you can see later it will tell you if you want to subscribe how much it will actually cost. So I did a screenshot of the page um, just to kind of show you because you have to um, you have to go ahead and sign up and I've already signed up so just to show you what it would look like if you did want to actually um, buy a subscription you can of course do the free trial but as an educator you get a better price so for example if it's just one instructor that wants a um, access to this it's $49 and then as you go and add teachers onto the subscription then you see how the price goes up and up and up and up. So it just depends on how many teachers you want to have the subscription and if um, it's something you want to do school-wide or just on an individual basis. 
Now you can see this is my profile page um, and after you create your profile you can see where you can edit your profile at any time so go in there and you can add anything that you want to add to it. Um, you can also add pictures to or add your picture to your profile so you can um, get a current picture for your students to be able to see. Um, and then you can see from there, that is when you can start doing um, other things such as add classes, you can add activities, you can add quizzes, um, surveys. Um, the, there's all kinds of things that you can do. When you're ready to create a class, um, and you can create as many classes as you teach, you'll just click on the little icon where it says class, and I just did 10 students. I wanted to just add and see what it looked like, but um, it's so simple. You pretty much just type in the names of your students. You can give them an ID number. You can put in their um, email address if you want to. Um, there's, It's just very simple. Um, you can do a grade book. You can edit your class very um, easily. You could see here where you can drop down if you want to pick class one or pick class two. You can print your roster. Um, you can send your email um, names and passwords to yourself. So the possibilities and um, the user-friendly part of this is very easy to use. Um, I've found it very easy to be able to add, you know, I only chose 10 students, but if you were to choose, you know, your whole class, it wouldn't take long at all. You'll also see in this left-hand navigation area where you can um, create and add activities. Um, you can see right here how many different types of activities you could actually um, choose. There's just endless um, activities. Um, you can organize them into folders. You can email them to yourself. There's all kinds of different types of activities. I actually um, taught social studies in sixth grade, so I thought it would be fun to kind of look and see what they might have for sixth grade social studies. So I chose um, a form of government activity where you can play the game and it asks you questions like hangman and I thought it was really cute. Um, so what you do is you actually assign this activity to your student that's in your class that you created, and then they go on Kia and they're able to go and view what activities you've given them, and then they can um, do those assignments. I'm a big um, proponent of work smarter, not harder. So if you look right here, you can see where it says activities others have made. Um, so if you click on that, you can just go and see endless amounts of activities um, that you could possibly choose from from any subject that you might teach. Um, so it's just a really cool, so if you teach U.S. history, you can narrow it down because you can see there's 527 activities on U.S. history, but you can narrow it down to make it much a smaller category so that you wouldn't have quite so many to look through. A lot of them have the age too, so you can see it immediately if it would work for your class. Now another thing that this offers is a way to do quizzes. So if you click on the quizzes um, little icon there over in the left hand navigation area, you can see that you can create a quiz. You can make it um, basic, advanced. Um, you can make your own question bank. Um, there are ideas for some good quizzes, but pretty much you can create your very own quiz that goes exactly with your curriculum, and that is how you would be able to assign it to your students. After you have created your quiz, um, another thing you can do is click on where it says surveys, and you can actually create a survey if there's some type of survey you want your students or your parents um, to fill out, you can do that on this site. Um, if you look at all of these different um, icons in the left-hand section, you'll see that there's many things that you can use um, to help you very easily access whatever it is you're looking for um, from if you want to make a question bank, if you have a place you can store your files, 
Um, there's a quick, easy calendar that you can assign things for your students um, using the calendar. So all they have to do is click on that. Um, any activities that have been shared, um, and that's what I clicked on earlier in a different icon, but it's also down here. If you know another teacher that's using Kia and you want to find that teacher so that you can just look at that teacher's um, activities, there's a spot for that. Um, there's a comment section. But what I found to be the most beneficial thing that Kia offers is literally they have a tutorial for every single thing that you might have a question about. So from get, just getting started, um, how can I start my own trial? How do I find my way around Kia? I mean, this pretty much is the basis for how to get started with this um, website. And it is very easy to understand. They do a little video, short video with each one of them. Like, for example, we'll see if this comes up, but here's one. You can see how quick and easy that is. It just comes up and it teaches you a little bit about it. Um, and just about every single thing that I've talked to you about is on here from sharing activities, what is an activity, what are the different types of activities, how do I assign my activities. So when you want to assign them into your classroom, it tells you exactly how to do it. You can also track your students' um, progress. You can edit and organize any of your activities. Um, then when you're ready to do quizzes, there's all kinds of cool things here that show you how to create um, quizzes and all the things. How do I view quiz results and grade them? Um, what are some of the reports? And with you know all the data collection that we have to do as classroom teachers now, um, this is a great, great tool. Um, also, here's a little section on how do I create my class? Um, how do I assign um, activities? What is a grade book? How do I edit my class and um, class web page? So you can see that even if you know you don't like to just read and learn how to use a web page, this tutorial center will teach you every single thing that you need to know to be able to fully use this um, site. Um, and then there's also a whole section on just what is Kia, tells you some of the different things that's about it. And then here's a whole little section again on, you know, a little video about Kia and activities. And this was where I told you earlier about starting um, your free trial. Um, you can also request a brochure or you can just um, print your own. Um, and then there's a whole Kia presentation. If it was something that you wanted to try to get in your school, you liked it and you wanted other teachers to be able to use it, you could actually um, do a whole presentation that they've gotten ready for you right here. You wouldn't even have to um, create it yourself. It's already there. Um, so pretty much in conclusion, I found this site to be really, really cool, really neat. Um, I, I don't know if, if your school uses um, Google, Google Classroom and all of that. I feel like that would cover a lot of what this site does. However, if you, you don't have that at your school, this would be a really cool way for you to be able to have assignments in a um, digital form that kids can go to and they can access them and then you can easily access their grades and have data on them and then also send um, information to parents because parents can also get on here and you know see all kinds of information so it could be like your class web page but it can also be a site where you go and your kids go to actually do assignments and take quizzes and um, things like that that go with your curriculum. So overall, I think Kia is a great resource. I really like that I did have a free trial membership, um, but I think if it's something that you know you'd really want to use, you definitely want to um, do the you know pay the money. Um, but it is expensive if you were to get you know a a whole school of teachers on it. 
But um, anyway, it's a, I thought it was a really neat source um, for just even learn about and kind of see what are some of the other things that are offered out there in the um, the World Wide Web. So I um, hope this helped you a little bit to understand about Kia, and um, I enjoyed sharing it with you, and I hope you have a wonderful evening. So now let's sum up. Educational games are games explicitly designed with educational purposes or which have incidental or secondary educational value. All types of games may be used in an educational environment. However, educational games are games that are designed to help people learn about certain subjects, expand concepts, reinforce development, understand a historical event or culture, or assist them in learning a skill as they play. Game types include board, card, and video games. As educators, governments, and parents realize the psychological needs and benefits that gaming has on learning, this educational tool has become mainstream. Games are interactive play that teach us goals, rules, adaptation, problem solving, interaction, all represented as a story. They satisfy our fundamental need to learn by providing enjoyment, passionate inv involvement, structure, motivation, ego gratification, adrenaline, creativity, social interaction and emotion in the game itself while the learning takes place. Now let's discuss questions after our lecture. What are the features of a MindMeister network? How to make a game on vocabulary game plates and describe the game hot potatoes. Here you can see the list of references that you can use after our lectures and on our practical lessons. Thank you for your attention.